up, everybody? Welcome to the Process Photos YouTube channel. We are hanging out here at Kelly Green Brewing. Steve, it's Friday night, baby. Living, living large. Having a good time. We just wrapped up the episode from tonight and just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, you know, Kelly Green. Hoping you guys come check it out. Uh, it's popping in here right now. It's very busy. Music's playing. A lot of food going on. A lot of... Uh, Awesome places to eat here in the Pittman area. Very dog friendly. Very dog friendly. Bring yeah, dog. we're hanging out with some puppers. Uh, maybe we'll be able to get some footage of that. Uh, right now, I'm drinking the Informants, a Russian Imperial Stout, about 10%. Very, very smooth. A uh, lot of chocolate flavor. Not, not really any booziness to it, which is dangerous because at 10%, you think you might taste a little bit, but it goes down really, really easy whether you're a big stout person or not. Um, I'm a really big fan of this. Also had a uh, double dry hopped IPA and a session IPA. I believe the double dry hopped is called Groceries and the session was called Lampin. They're both uh, very new to the brewery. This is the first time that they've had them on tap since moving to this new amazing tap room that they have, which they've only been here for about a month or two. So definitely make sure you check them out. Steve, you went with the flight. Uh, you're already through yeah, it, already, so it must already have been good. Through it. Absolutely good. Uh, the, the Groceries, the, the uh, double IPA, it was awesome. That, that was probably my favorite beer here, I would definitely have to say. Uh, I also had the 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 Bolel, which is a Beer de Garde, or some sort of Belgian beer. I think beer. it's Beer de Garde. Something like that. Something foreign. Getting but cultural. Cultural, fancy. But that was a very good, very strong. Also had the uh, Joe's Vacation. That's a porter. Very, very good. Um, that's something I... In an upcoming episode, uh, uh, I may be using a porter for something food related. So, okay. so keep keep an eye on that, and that would definitely be a contender. And also the Matty Ice, uh, that was pretty good. I didn't have that. I was thinking uh, about that's a sour boy. Yeah, it was a sour boy. Good. So, very very good. The, the the wife thought it was too sour. I didn't think it was sour enough. But uh, if you like sours, you'll definitely like the Matty Ice. Women. Yeah. <laughs> Just a dumb joke. Um, on, on to the Sixers. So we were just talking about the Boston win, which was awesome to go up 3-0 in the season series. But wanted to do a little exclusive content for the YouTube. Just kind of wanted to talk a little bit more. I, we mentioned it a little bit, but I don't think we went into, you know, that deep of a conversation in regards to, you know, who we're expecting to step up in the absence of Joel Embiid. If it's, you know, the obvious candidate, or there's somebody you think could be a dark horse for that. And just in, you know, the one game against Boston now, you know, what what did you see the team do well and what did you think is something that they're still going to have to adjust and figure out with them beat out? So I, I'll start. And I'll give you a little numbers here that I had in regards to those as well. Uh, we've talked for, you know, two years now about dealing with this team, with Joel Embiid off the court and the struggles that they've had. And while I think... There are still some concerns that have been addressed this season. I think there has been improvement. I don't know if everybody's on the ship that it has been better. So to give you a point of reference for how good Joel Embiid actually is, and, and he still is, even in a year where I think people would say he's having a down year, the Sixers are, are plus 113 points when Embiid is on, is on the court and playing. So like obviously the net result of Joel Embiid being out there for this team is tremendous. It's a reason that... They're at, you know, at least where they are in the East amidst all their struggles. In past years, we would always talk about, oh, well, when Embiid was out there, they were plus 40, and then when they went off, they were like a negative 32 or right. something. Yeah. Well, Saw fortunately, this season, when he sits, the Sixers are still a plus 24 for the season. So is it plus 113? No. But your best player comes off the court, there's going to be a drop-off. You're not going to maintain the same level. No team is as good with its best player on the bench as they are on the floor. So a point of calling him the best player. It's just fucking, it just makes sense, you yeah. know? So the fact that at least that they're positive is amazing, and it's a credit to Al Horford. Um, for the majority of the time, Embiid is not out there. Horford generally has been, other than a few stints from a Kyle O'Quinn, from a Norvell Pell, or even in the Boston game, we finally saw a little bit of Ben Simmons at the five. You know, whether or not he wants to say he was playing the five or not, he was at the five as far as most of us are concerned. And against the Celtics, Horford 7-11 from the field, 17 points, eight rebounds, five of which were offensive, which blew me away. Yeah. Because I, I, even, you know, us being in the building, I don't remember thinking that he was dominating the offensive glass like that, but five offensive rebounds is awesome. 
had six assists in 32 minutes, and he was the game high, plus 19. So there's something to be said about, you know, this stretch without Joel Embiid and hoping that it can be what gets Al Horford out of the slump that he was definitely in, if we're being honest. And this was a great start. And against his former team, you know, winning the season series against a, a bitter rival that has had your number for years to just get that out of the way and know that when you have that other game in Boston that you're not going to have to be worrying about even in the season series and hearing them talk about it and all that. It's just good to see him get on track. Um, you know, you, you got to try and find positives in, in stuff like this. I think Al Horford is one. I think Ben Simmons is another. And then, you know, we talked a, a lot on this pod about Norvell Pell. And, you know, we'll have to see what happens with him. I'm really hoping he remains with the team. My inclination is to think that he will get a spot, but those are the things that, that I think are, are going to help them throughout this one- to two-week period that we expect Joel Embiid to be out. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on a lot of the same things. And, look, when we signed Al Horford, that was a benefit to it, right, is that, hey, when Embiid needs a rest or if he happens to get injured, you, you have a great replacement, you know, for Embiid. I do worry about because – you know, before uh, this two-game win streak, Horford did have a pretty bad streak of games. Um, you know, he, he brought up about, you know, the, the fit, and there's a little sh shade thrown around, and now he's kind of back on track. And, you know, part of that is because he's playing his natural center position. I do worry about that when Embiid does come back, can he continue that when he's back to playing the four? So, obviously, that remains to be seen, but... Um, I'm really happy, you know, how because we we can't be winning these types of games if we don't have a productive Al Horford. So you mentioned when Embiid comes back. So obviously we're talking about things that we hope that they can figure out and things they can do to manage to get by until he does. So seeing what you've seen now from Al Horford in these kind of situations, hoping it gets him back on track, do you think that if he's successful over this stretch without him, what do you think it's more of an indicator of and what do you think like is more likely can this get him his overall game on track to the point where he can become you know able to play alongside Embiid in a better way and it just gets him right and everything looks like it did the first couple games of the season where arguably Horford was like our best player for a little bit yeah. big reason we started 5 and 0 or do you think that this could be the stretch and the you know visual evidence for Brett Brown to be like all right it definitely wasn't really ideal to have them playing alongside each other and to now stagger that more than it was and not necessarily work on the fit of Horford and MB together and more so work on finding ways to split them up and finding lineups that can be effective one with Joel Embiid being the primary center and the other being with Al Horford as your primary center. It'll be really interesting because uh, if MB does come back one to two week uh, in one to two weeks, you only have another one to two weeks to kind of figure it out with the trade deadline coming up. Now, is is Horford going to be dealt at the deadline? Highly, highly, highly doubt that. We've, so. we've talked about it. But him having a really good stretch of games without Embiid, can that translate to him playing better when they move him at the four? Maybe. I don't think that'll necessarily translate to him being consistent, playing a different position. But I just just him having a good string of games without Embiid in the lineup, I, I mean, that's got to be something. You know, if, if we're winning, winning's kind of a cure-all. They always like to say that's things that can boost morale. And, you know, maybe that'll just give them the confidence, like, okay, Joe's coming back. You know, now it's time for me to take over my position before. And then when it comes to, you know, during the second and third quarters when they uh, stagger Embiid and uh, Horford's minutes a little bit, he'll obviously he'll just go back in you know same rhythm of what was hopefully a good five-game streak of him playing that center position, uh, playing it well. So I don't think, you know, if he does play well, will it necessarily translate success at the four when Embiid comes back? But it's a, definitely a step in the right direction. I agree. And, and you made a great point. Winning is good for morale. You know what's not good for morale? Getting six biscuits for 20 people Oof. and leaving the Popeye's fries mm. at Popeye's. Those are some damn good fries too, man. Matisse dropped the ball, man. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if that has any anything to do with either their success or their struggles on this upcoming stretch of games. 
at Dallas, at Indiana, and then home for Brooklyn, Chicago, and then at the Garden against the Knicks. So again, we're at Kelly Green Brewing. Check it out, Pittman, New Jersey. Thanks to them for having us. Cheers, trust the podcast, and uh, make sure you hit that little YouTube subscribe button, baby. Thanks. And Al, Al Horford, no more kickball. Ooh, yeah. Don't, Don't kick do the ball it. in the stands. Yeah. Gonna hurt somebody. Leave that to Embiid. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. <laughs>